Hello everybody, this is Vettel121 and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. And apparently dwarven weapons are too heavy for humans, I guess. Yeah. Well, they're definitely too expensive. Holy shit, 15,000 gil for that? No, I don't think so. In fact, none of the weapons in this weapon shop are worth buying at all. Not even the Flame Lance. But yeah, I, I don't care about any of these weapons. They don't appeal to me at all. But there probably is going to be some armor that I want to buy here. Yeah, flame, shield, flame mail, I don't need any of that stuff. Uh, but I actually do want to buy a couple Sage's Miters here. Two for, uh, one for Cecil, one for Rosa. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to buy a couple Sage's Surplices here and three Rune Armlets, actually. Yeah, that should be pretty nice. And yeah, with Rydia, she comes with a whip, and uh, yeah, if she physically attacks that, she has a chance to paralyze uh, enemies. I don't like it, though, because I'd rather equip the Polymorph Rod, because that will give her an intelligence boost of plus five. So yeah, I want to give that to her. Now, as far as the gold hairpin, this will also increase intelligence by a certain number that I can't remember, but yeah, I'm going to give Rosa the Sage's Miter, because that will give her a bigger spirit boost. So yeah, give that to her and a rune armlet because that's just better all around. I think it gives a spirit and intellect boost. And for Cecil here, yeah, I'll just give him the Sage's Miter along with, uh... Okay, yeah, Rydia comes with Gaia gear, but whatever. I don't, I, I, I'd rather give her the Sage's Surplice because she needs the extra defense. And yeah, with the gold hairpin, yeah, that'll raise her intelligence. That'll definitely help. And, uh, yeah, as far as Yang is concerned, uh, I'd rather give him the Rune Armlet, because his magic defense really, really, really sucks. And, uh, yeah, he'll, his attacks will be dealing enough damage with the Kempo Gi and the Headband equipped, so yeah, that's enough strength bonuses for him, so I'll just give him the Rune Armlet. And, uh, yeah, I'll give Cecil the Power Armlet, just because, you know, whatever. And, yeah, as far as Kane, I gave him the Flame Mail just for now, because it's better than the Mithril Armor. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And yeah, Rydia's intellect is now 44, so that should be pretty good. And as far as like uh, how effective her her uh, her <laughs> her spells and summons will be, but yeah, I didn't mean to call Rydia a whore there. She's not a whore. Anyways, yeah, with all the equipment I just equipped on Rosa, now her spirit is 47, which is pretty good. And yeah, Dwarven weapons are too heavy, blah, whatever. Dwarven armor is thick, too hic thick for humans to move in, I'd say. Yeah, I don't think there is any Dwarven armor in this game. Not that I know of, anyways. Alright, well in this chest we get a Dwarven axe. I don't like it. I really don't like it. Yeah, as you can see, it's not even... Yeah, they... they I like the way they made axes stronger in the DS version, but in this version of the game, it's going to be weaker. It does raise its defense, and it does raise other stats. But, uh, yeah, let's take a look at that here. Uh, let's see, attack multiplier 679, accuracy, defense. Yeah, okay, he's, it's, uh, as you can see, Sussel's got pretty good evasion there, 66%. But let's see what happens when we equip the Dwarven Axe here. Okay, well... Yeah, as you can see, his accuracy goes down, and his attack multiplier goes down too. It does raise some of his stats, like strength and stamina, but it decreases other stats like speed. Well, I don't really care about intellect for him, but yeah, whatever. I, I'd much rather have the flame sword equipped. Yeah, because that's just much better overall to have the flame sword equipped. And, and, uh... Yeah, I think, yeah, the Dwarven Axe actually nerfed his spirit, too, which is bad. So, uh, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather Cecil have the Flame Sword equipped. Yeah, Dwarven Axe in this version of the game, probably not going to be that useful. King Guy wants you to put the treasures to good use. Alright. Well, we will do that. We will definitely do that. And, yeah, we should be able to find something over here. Alright, we get a Bacchus Wine. 
don't need those as much now that Rosa has the Berserk spell, but it's nice to use a Bacchus Wine every now and then in case I want to do other stuff with her. Alright, we get a Power Armlet in that chest, and an Aether in that one, and we get an Elixir, alright, very nice, and a Silver Hourglass, better version of the Bronze, bronze Hourglass, I should say, and yeah, it, ca it casts a longer lasting stop on enemies, which is pretty nice. As far as my inventory and I'm getting items, yeah, I might want to organize that so I can get some get some room for some other stuff here. Alright, yeah, let's head up here. You're fighting Gobez too? Take this treasure, it will be of some help. Alright, man. We will definitely do that. Um, yeah. We can go over here, we can find something else. Alright, another Bacchus wine. And yeah, high potion, kind of worthless, but yeah, got some secret passages here, another elixir, an ether, and a black belt gee, alright, definitely nice, yeah, that's a better version of the Kempo gee, basically, yeah, much better defense, it'll raise the strength even more than the Kempo gee, and it's slightly better magic defense, so I definitely want to equip that on Yang there. Yeah, that's why I wasn't too concerned about giving him a power armlet, although I could, and boost his strength even more. And, yet, yeah, you know what? Screw it, I will give him a power armlet. He doesn't... Yeah, I don't think any of the enemies, uh... Yeah, it's not gonna matter. I'll just give him the power armlet, because... Yeah, a lot of the enemies that we're gonna be facing while he's still in our party really don't hit that hard as it is. I mean, well, I will obviously keep the third rune armlet around for another character. Alright, we get 5,000 gil in that pot. Very nice, very nice. Dwarven items hold magical powers, I bet humans can't... Yeah, apparently humans can't do anything with dwarven stuff, jeez. Anyways, there's one more place we can go here in the dwarven castle for now. Whoop! Secret Passage. Alright, it's the Lolly Hole Pub. Silly dwarves, always fighting, never quaffing. The only thing I'd fight for is more drink. Lolly Ho Ho Ho! And yes, he is going to dance for us. Drunken dancing. Oh yeah. <coughs> yeah, gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. Yeah, axes in this game really aren't that useful, actually, in my opinion. Maybe the poison axe or the rune axe is pretty good, but yeah. I like how they're useful in the DS version, but not in this version. Alright, we are in the developer's office. 1991 developer's office? Okay, whatever. S. Tanaka, newbie. I hope, you I hope to level up before my next project. I want my own desk. Endo. I'm exhausted. Oh, okay. That sucks, I guess. I Dobashi. I didn't steal anything. I've been framed. <laughs> yeah. K, because I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. No vacation for us again, right, Mr. S? I guess Mr. S would be uh, Hironobu Sakaguchi. And, oh, it's a mini mage. Vulnerable to fire. Yeah, that's another... Oh! Yeah, that's right about the, uh... The flame mail. And apparently this guy is vulnerable to everything. Holy cow. Wow. That's... Weak against all-nighters. Scared of girls with specs. Really weak. <laughs> wow. That was interesting. But yeah, the flame armor, it, it protects against ice, but it actually makes you more vulnerable to fire attacks. So yeah, I might want to actually equip the mithril armor back on Kane before we get to the next area. Because yeah, there's enemies in there that like to use a lot of flame attacks. So yeah, until I find some, some different equipment 
to pair with the fire armor, then uh, yeah, I might not want to uh, have that equipped. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'll be the only female once my graphics partner leaves. Oh, <sighs> I hope I don't choke on all the testosterone. <laughs> This will be my final piece of work. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Eh, uh, okay. Whatever. Mm, you got a red chocobo over here? Hironobu Sakiguchi, director. Q! Okay, the director has nothing to say. What the hell? You wanna die? Uh, no, not really, so I'll just run away. Haha. -ha. K Ito sound effects. Good luck with this game. I hope you go on to play our other titles as well. Um, well, I already have actually, but whatever. Hey everybody, are you all enjoying my work? Yeah, I am. You have potential. If you want, I can teach you to play an instrument or two. Eh, no thanks. Not really my thing. Time to do what I like best. Okay. Anyways, yeah. Head down here to the break room. Rosa and Rydia, eh? You girls are cute. Let me be of service. <laughs> Tay Tokido has joined the party. All right, and whoa, what'd he say? Duh. Yeah. Please take me with you. I don't like it here. Yeah. Whatever. Work always comes before play. Yeah. No more extra movies, no more bugs, no more work for me! <laughs> and yes, we can find a lustful lolly hole in this bookshelf. I don't think it does anything. I mean, you can have Cecil read it and he'll be like, This is my favorite! But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all there is to the developer's room. It's a little bit different in the DS version. You can actually get the Reach Augment if you talk to all the characters in the developer room there, but even in that game, I, yeah, I don't care for that augment. I think it's pretty much a waste. Oh yeah, and I forgot about this crap. Yeah, we can find geysel greens in these pots here, which is pretty nice. And, uh, yeah, let's see what I want to dump here in the gold chocobo. Uh, well, what the hell? Oh, I want... Oh, yeah, that's right. We have to use a guy with some greens here. Duh. Yes, and we can deposit stuff in the gold in the uh, fat chocobo here. And I'm actually going to... Yeah, I need the claws, actually. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Yeah, I'll throw that in there. Whatever. Uh, Sage's surplus. Oh, I didn't equip that yet. Yeah, I, I don't care about selling those. I'll keep that. I'll keep that. Wizard's head, that's, uh, I probably won't need anymore. Yeah, I'll keep the mithril armor. Luster shield, yeah, I'll throw that in there for a rainy day. And, yeah, that's about it, actually. Yeah, I already sold my dwarven axe, because it's worthless. Yeah, very worthless. And, yeah, I'll equip the Sage's Surplus on Cecil. Why not? It'll... It'll boost his spirit, so his cure spells do a little bit more healing. And yeah, that's pretty much it, actually. I think that's good enough. Should be good to go. And yeah. Let's go this way now. Lolly ho! Yeah, good stuff. Take care. There are gigantic cannons in the Tower of Babel. Yeah, I think you guys mentioned that before. Alright, in these chests here, we get three cottages. Awesome. Underworld monsters are fearsome. Be careful. Alright, man, we'll do that. I'm brave, but that's nothing compared to how brave you are. Oh, thanks, man. Rubicante, the strongest of the four elemental archfiends, is at the Tower of Babel. Alright, well, maybe we'll run into him. He who fights and runs away lives to see another day! Yeah, that is true sometimes. Gammit, come here! No! 
You sneak in while we distract them with our tanks. Alright, man. We'll do that. Inside is the water of life. Drink before you go. Yeah, so yeah, never use the inn here at the Dwarven Castle because you can just come here and use this. Alright, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and in the next episode of Final Fantasy IV, we will head to the Tower of Babel. This is Vettel121, see you next time.